our numbers. So hi guys, welcome to the session today. Uh, that is about DevOps is my culture, Agile is my practice, value is my game. That is going to be facilitated by Lynette Kiunga, uh, who is a technical engineer at, uh, at, DevOps, at, at Dell Technologies. Yeah. So we are going to hear from her in a few. So meanwhile, uh, we have some items uh, that we're going to go through. And the first one is we are going to go through this um, quote, which says the only impossible journey is the one you never begin. So if you never start something, there is no way you'll be, it, it will be possible for you to achieve anything on that thing. So you have to start. So it will always be impossible as long as you've not started. But the moment you start, it is possible. Uh, on our agenda today, uh, we are going to start with an icebreaker. Uh, so for the icebreaker, you're going to respond on the chat because uh, you do not have the abilities to talk, uh, to, to, to turn on your microphone. So you can only type on the chat. And then uh, we are going to learn about the community. That is Nairobi DevOps community. And then after that, we're going to learn about uh, the session for today. That is DevOps is my culture, Agile is my practice, value is my game. And then after that, you're going to have questions and answer session. And uh, all through the session, I encourage you guys to be sending your questions. And uh, even though we have the question and answer session at the end, at some point, uh, Lynette may be able to respond to some of your questions. So any at any point where you feel like there is a question you want to ask, go ahead and ask the question and she'll be able to respond to you. So uh, what is our on our icebreaker? So the icebreaker for today is, would you rather have a good life now or have a hard, a hard one so that the future generation can have a good one? So would you have a hard life now? Uh, so that, uh, so would you have a good life now or have a hard life now so that the future generations can have a good life. So uh, keep your responses on uh, coming on the chat. Uh, which kind of life would you prefer? To have a good life now uh, for yourself or a hard life at, uh, so that the future can, uh, the future generation can have a good life. I'm looking at the chat, at your comments, uh, keep uh, them coming, kindly post on the chat. I hope you guys are typing. Um, looking at the chat, looking at the chat, waiting for your responses. Which kind of life would you prefer? A good one now or a hard one so that the future generation can have a good one? So Manasseh says, uh, having a hard one now. Uh, thank you, Manasseh, for commenting. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? Maybe I can get two or three more people commenting. Can hear from two or more people. And as we wait, maybe for them to chat, maybe we can hear from our speaker, Lynette. Uh, so Lynette, uh, maybe if you don't mind, maybe you can just unmute and tell us which one you'd prefer. A uh, hard one now or a good one? Um, I think for me, it's a hard one so that the future generation can have a good one. But I think um, art is relevant or depends with like your intake of how much uh, toughness you have. Yeah. Okay, so the rest of the guys have been waiting for your comments. I cannot see any. So for me, um, I would like to have a balance. So I have a, I have a, a, a somehow, I don't want to have an entirely hard life, at least to have a fair life. And also have a fair life for the future generation. <laughs> so that... Uh, at least I also enjoy life a little bit, yeah. So let me move on. So about the community, 
So uh, Nairobi DevOps community, it's a community of DevOps enthusiasts. So we have uh, experts and learners who are looking for opportunities to network and grow. So the networks, uh, the, the experts share knowledge and the learners or the new people who are new to the DevOps field get the opportunity to interact with people who have more experience and get exposed to DevOps tools. So our mission is to create a supportive and inclusive community that uh, values diversity and supports learning and growth. So we welcome every kind of person in our community, anyone with any different beliefs, uh, from different cultures, uh, everyone is uh, included in the community. And our goal is just to provide an environment where people can learn and grow. And then uh, our vision is uh, to be a leading uh, DevOps community in Nairobi and beyond, um, which we are already. We are a leading DevOps community in Kenya and beyond already. So we are the leading. In case you want to join the community, uh, and support the community to grow and do that in uh, any of the following ways. One of them is uh, volunteering to do sessions in the community. So if you are an expert and you feel like you can add value to community members, you can help in uh, doing that and then share your knowledge. And uh, you can also connect us to people. If you know any people who can be able to add value to community members, you can connect us with such people. You can also give us feedback on what is working and areas that we can improve on. You can also share on our channels. So you, you can post uh, on our channels uh, if you come across anything that you think community members can benefit from. So you can be able to share articles, you can share videos, you can write your own articles, you can share knowledge, you can reply to what uh, questions that people are asking, and you can also reshare what we post on our channels. Uh, you can also help us, join us and help us in organizing our events and um, also branding. Uh, the br branding, uh, we need, need things like uh, maybe people who can design uh, posters, people who can help in creating logos and such. So. If you think you are good in that, you can join our team. So now, in case you are not in the community and you've joined, what you can do is scan the QR codes and you'll be able to join our platforms. So you can click on uh, uh, the first one will lead you to LinkedIn, the middle one to WhatsApp, and then uh, we have Twitter. So those are our channels. So you can uh, join any of them or you can join all of them. Yeah. So, and share about the socials so that other people can also be able to join. So at this point, uh, in case you have any questions about the community, you can be able to ask. And as you ask your questions, I will invite our speaker for today, Lynette Kendi, to grace us with her knowledge about uh, DevOps, Agile, and value. So welcome, Lynette. So I'll stop sharing so that you can be able to share. For those uh, who uh, want to ask questions, you can type your questions and send them on the chat. So I'll be looking for your questions on the chat. If you have any concerns, just uh, type on the chat. The reason why we are not allowing people to talk or to share their video, to turn on their videos, is because we've, we've been spammed before and we want everyone to have a good session. So we turn those abilities off for everyone so that we can have a good session. So you can, uh, if, in case you have anything, just type on the chat. You can interact with the session through the emojis, so you can be able to clap, you can be able to uh, cry, you can do anything <laughs> uh, using the emojis. So, uh, Lynette, go ahead and share your screen and take it over from here. Um. So, hi everyone. My name is Lynette Kendi, as indicated by Samuel. Just give me a second for me to be able to share my slides. And let me know when they are visible.
Okay. They are visible. Yes, they are visible, Lynette. Yes, just a minute. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So my talk today is going to be on DevOps is my culture, Agile is my practice, well is my game, which is a term that I was able to coin on what DevOps um, is all about. So my talk today is not technical, it's more on the culture of DevOps. So we are going to have a look at the different, uh, different practices that are there in the industry and we are going to look at three organizations that have been able to implement DevOps and Agile and have been able to give value to their users. Okay, so the more details about me, I work as a infrastructure technical engineer at Dell and there we offer, so it's an integration between hardware and uh, on-prem and cloud. So we are able to facilitate different customers who are looking at their data center setup, expansion, whether they're expanding to cloud or this incident where we had the VMware licensing changing and they're able to move them to OpenShift. So uh, that's how DevOps com comes in for me in my day-to-day -day work. I'm able to support customers to be able to implement DevOps in their data, in their data center when they have their work on on-prem and also uh, on the cloud or when they want to migrate to cloud, okay? You can find me on Twitter as k underscore kyunga254. I also do a lot of blogs on AWS mostly and um, just anything random that works for me. Yeah. And apart from tech, I love hiking and you'll find me in the adventure trails mostly. Okay. So in case you have a question, just stop me and I will start my talk right now. I will also put my video off so that it's possible to be able to um, maintain the bandwidth of the network. I don't want to experience any lagging. Okay, so DevOps is my culture. Um, when we look at the term DevOps, it signifies a cultural shift towards collaboration, transparency, and continuous improvement, which enables team to deliver high quality software efficiently. Uh, Good organization, case study of the organization that you're going to look at today, it's AWS. So AWS, uh, when I refer to Amazon, it means AWS, or when I say AWS, I'll be regarding to Amazon. So some of the um, some of the ways that they have been able to practice DevOps is one by cross-functional collaboration, which is where developers and operations team collaborate willingly deliver value. We all know that um, if the operations team and the dev and the developers do not see eye to eye, then we'll have a problem with um, uh, getting the correct sizing on the infrastructure, which will lead to uh, technical debt for the organization. Then another one is self-service. And I'll say a quote by Gandhi, which says, if you want to change the world, start with yourself. Uh, even in, I don't know where you guys work, but even at this at a startup where you are able to give more influence and are able to, you know, uh, propose more ideas on how you can run the culture, it's and it's quite different from organizations that are already established, which means you are the only thing you can do is improve on the actual structure that is already running. But for the when when you're working at a startup, it's easy. So self-service is where each member of the team needs to embrace the change at the behavioral level. So we know at the end of the day, uh, a, an organization can say we practice DevOps, but if the top leaders and the developer at, this, at the self level is not able to actualize that um, continuous iteration and uh, collaborate willingly to deliver value, then it's not going to happen. We're just going to have issues with the um, operations team and issues with the developer team. Then we have another um, strategy and it's blameless postmortem. And AWS has been able to do this very well. Blameless postmortem focuses on encouraging teams to talk through what went wrong step by step and brainstorm ideas for improving. So instead of actually 
blaming someone on why they why they deleted probably a a production database you'd want to understand why they thought it's um not the old production database let's say have a feature in the production database you'd want to understand why they did that uh, by letting them explain the wrong steps but step by step on how the thought process was to actually be able to reach at that point where they decided this was the right move this allows that the that the member is able to embrace learning and change because they are able to understand and the managers are able to explain this is this is where the the disconnect comes in with your thought process the steps are correct up to step 5 and when you when you saw it as a as a error on your end the thought process that continued there was wrong so you are able to embrace learning and see and the next time you are able to notice where the error is so the concept of two pizza team is that no team should be big enough that it would take more than two pizzas to feed the team when you look at two pizzas um as illustrated in the image right there is that six or let's say a maximum of 12 people uh, would be able to eat this pizza and feel quite full so that's how they maintain their team and this focuses on that it's for this culture of two pizza team enables that there's accountability and autonomy in the team so the team is small and it will be able to deliver value independently so there is a it's called a ringelman effect where um, if you can remember in campus when you're given work as like many students you a group of more than 10 not everyone will do the work, right? Everyone will be, um, only like a few people will be able to actually have an implementation in that work. But when you're given a small team of like four, everyone is able to feel that they are, they are, they are able to contribute and feel that there's productivity in what they are doing and there's value that they can see of what they are done. So this is where the two pizza teams, it's based on that concept. Because the Ringelman effect is a tendency for individuals individual productivity to decrease in very large groups because you don't feel the value that you're adding to the team. So this two pizza team focuses on the day one mentality for Amazon. Amazon focuses on that every single day that their developers come to the office that they should feel that they are coming in to solve an issue that's going to bring value. By this, the two pizza team focuses on they have a single threaded focus. So they focus on one particular item and they they will carry the the product from draw across the whole software development life cycle. So for example, let's say they're working on AWS Lambda and AWS Lambda has issues. They will focus on from the engineering bit, the testing bit, the product, the program management, its operations, and the customer service of it. So they they will develop the product and they will maintain that product. And if this product uh, grows to be too big to be able to support, like when AWS Lambda started, the serverless model started, it was really very small customers and it was based on the fact that most customers would not be able, they didn't have the expertise um, to manage the, to be able to set up. So with the brought in managed service, which is equal to serverless. And now they're scrapping off the serverless model and um, renaming it as managed service. So the managed service now is a bigger, um, subs it's a bigger portion of the same product. But what they do when, uh, like now the AWS Lab has become too huge, instead of um, continuing adding more people to the team, they'll do a subset of this same product and they'll have two subsections and each team will deal with either the customer section of it, uh, or they will support AWS Lambda for an analytics, then another team will support AWS Lambda for um, application development, and the other one will support uh, probably for machine learning like that. So they'll subdivide instead of growing a team to a lot more than a two pizza team, okay? And then this um, single threaded focus for the two pizza team also has a single threaded ownership and leader. So the leaders um, focus on a particular segment. So this will be like the data analytics. There will be leaders that will be focusing on the data analytics and they will have 
ownership of a specific product. So if you're working on the data analytics and let's say you're focusing on Amazon Athena, that will be your specific uh, product that is, and you'll have two pizza teams, small two pizza teams working on different segments of that same product. Okay, so this um, enables them to go from ideation to execution and also to support ongoing operational improvement and constantly um, do product iteration and innovation as when customers have any issues coming up. So that's how uh, Amazon has been able to put DevOps into their culture and they've been able to in make sure it's that they, they maintain the D1 mentality with the Tupiza team and ensure that they iteration in every single segment of their work, of their product. And that's why they're able to grow this much. Okay. Um, I hope there is no question on my end. Um, so there is no question so far. Okay. Then. And then you are, you, are, you are still on the first slide. Which slide is that? DevOps is my culture case study, AWS to Pizza team. Yes, that's what I was describing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Then I'll move to the second bit, which is Agile is my practice. So for this, we know Agile as the fastest way to be able to do something, okay, and to learn from it. So Agile methodologies serve as the practical framework for implementing DevOps principles. So they focus on the iterative development and how fast can we learn from it. When um, the best example to use this is Spotify. Spotify started up as a startup and it's the best um, the best case study for how Agile has been implemented at a large scale business organization. And we can see from, so with Agile, there are different frameworks like the Kanban, the Sprints, all these enable people to be able to practice Agile. But with, with Spotify, they have been able to integrate all these Agile frameworks and still be able to practice DevOps within these Agile frameworks. And so I'll explain the image on your right, uh, where it has the tribe, the chapter, the PO, and the guild, and some, the squad. So start from the, the basic unit of the Spotify model is the mini startup, it's called a squad. And these are autonomous team composed of six to 12 people working together on a specific feature for the, for the user experience. So you do understand that Spotify as an application feature, if you have used it, it has the user, the, it has the customer side where I only listen to music. It has the um, artist side where they actually upload their music. And it has the producers and managers side where they actually support the different, they're able to track the metrics of all the artists that they manage, okay? So these are different user experiences that the team in Spotify have to do. So the code model interacts with this. Um, so if you're in a squad, you are working on, let's say the customer side and you're working on the customer experience on the side of listening and how they are the interface that they are using to be able to select music, the algorithms that are using to recommend them. Yeah. So each squad is able to choose any agile framework that they need. So they can either do a Kanban, they can either do extreme programming. And then each squad is assigned a mission, a mission which is now you are working in customer in the customer side and you're focusing on the interactiveness, the UI, UX of the customer side. That's your mission. Then the product, they're given a product owner and an agile coach. A product owner is the one that maintains, uh, ensures that the squad is able to, to remember their mission and not to digress to another team. And then the agile coach enables them to be able to practice the agile framework that they've been able to use. And then from the squads, we have a tribe. So a tribe, as you can see on the image, has enclosed other squads. It's an incubator for the squads. That's why you can reference it to. So it's made up of multiple squads working together on related missions and features. So sample features include like they are working on the music player or the backend infrastructure of the customer. And it has a maximum of 150 people and have a certain degree of autonomy. Um, so they are placed under authority of one or more tribe leaders and tribe leaders come from the different members of the squad. 
they are the tribe is responsible for fostering teamwork and collaboration within the tribes and across the squads and often they share the same office space so if they are working on the music player for customer they will actually be in the same office space and this is how they enable collaboration then we have the chapters these you'll say are like the professors you can see they are they cut across horizontally through the squads so chapters are uh, designated for specialists and they are able to help other developers and they are, it's meant for seniors and they ensure that best practices are established and followed by everyone who is working on a specific feature across the entire tribe. As you see, the tribe focuses on a similar feature for all the squad. So if they are working on the customer experience, the chapter also uh, focuses on the best practices for that uh, specific feature. And then we the chapters are only led by specialists. They're not led by, they're not, they don't allow everyone. So for everyone to be able to support, we to um, participate in um, getting to know each other and helping out uh, within the team and helping out with the iterativeness, we have guilds. Guilds are like community of interest and they're transversal groups across. Transversally, you can see they cut across horizontally and vertically. And these are meant for exchange solutions, knowledge sharing, and also to avoid time wastage. Because um, a squad, a person in the squad can have worked on a similar issue that a person in a different squad or a different tribe is focusing. But since they are in a guild and they work, um, they are they in a, the guild focuses on you can they want to work on hackathons that have different interests. They want to try a new language learning model that will be the interest, but they are also able to knowledge share across each other. And the guilds are open to everyone. So anyone in the in the squad uh, can join any of the guilds that they are interested in. So this is main, main focus for it is for self-development and learning. So you'd ask us, uh, you'd ask me how does, um, since they are only focused on the development side, how do they ship these products to production? So we have system-wide roles, which cut across the whole organization. So they have the system owners who focus on now the operations and they work collaboratively with the tribe. Um, so they focus on documentation, they focus on building the infrastructure and the release processes that is continuous iteration and development to ensure that the products or the iterations that the squads are building are able to be pushed to production. Then we have chief architects who work on a high level and um, ensure that the whole architecture cuts across, uh, they cut across multiple systems and they ensure that the whole architecture of the system is maintained at an high quality, okay? So that's how Agile is my practice, the best way to explain how they have been able to implement that. And you can see how it is different from the first one, which was Amazon. Amazon, this too small, uh, the two to pizza team ensures that they focus on the whole SDLC, um, the whole cycle. So they move from development till customer support. But for the Spotify model, they focus on the development and they are diff once they are done with the feature, uh, developing the feature, they give it back to the system owners. The system owners focus on releasing it. So they're not involved in the whole iteration. They are involved to a certain point until they're done with their feature. Then they give it to someone else. So you can see the difference of the implementation. Then uh, we'll move to the next one, which is value is my game. So for value, you know that there's no business that ever existed without value. And it underscores the ultimate goal for delivering a meaningful outcome to customers. So if you're not giving customers value, then you're not in business and definitely you're going to go to run out of business or go bankrupt. So now the best case study is Netflix. Netflix has been recommended um, for, has been commended for their personalized recommendation system that enabled them to gain a lot of users uh, between 2020, between the pandemic and now. So how has Netflix been able to do this? They focus on personalized recommendation and seamless streaming experience, which um, demonstrates its commitment to delivering value to subscribers. One of the ways is that, um, is it, one of the ways Netflix is able to successfully 
do personalized recommendation is by caching content on servers near the users. So they use customer edge locations. And you all know if you've studied the Netflix um, architecture, once they move to AWS, once they cache content at customer edge locations, they are able to give more quality and, Im and uh, improve the speed that customers are able to stream. So there's not a lot of lagging and you, you realize when you use like other platforms, you really have to wait a little bit. And also another feature that they do is the internal pre-quality checks on the movies. So once they receive movies from production, they ensure that they meet the Netflix standards before adding them to the catalog. So one of the biggest uh, competition, one of the biggest uh, challenge for Netflix is that it's competition for attention. So even right now, you are listening to me talk. Um, you have chose to listen to this, but there's another foregone choice that maybe probably you'd be seated with family right now. You'd be maybe preparing for tomorrow. You would maybe watch a movie. You'd be listening to music. There are a lot of options that you could have focused your attention to, but you chose this. So even for Netflix, that is the biggest challenge for them. So Netflix is not only competing with other streaming services. Let's say like here in Kenya, where we have Showmax, we have the Amazon uh, Prime, we have HBQ, we have the television, but there's also social media apps, which is like uh, net, uh, which is like social, like Instagram, uh, TikTok, and this is also has taken like the world with a storm, and people use this so much. You can find that someone might start watching a movie and they start scrolling on their phone and they forget that they were watching a movie and Netflix and Netflix has to remind you that uh, you're still watching this. So that's how they need to be able to hold your attention for longer and that's their biggest struggle. So you can see as Netflix is trying to give value, they have even introduced fast loves which is like Instagram Reels on t or TikTok videos. It enables you to see the videos that are short clips of the of the of the movies that you'd like to watch, and you're able to scroll down through and choose based on your specific uh, act, uh, actor who has acted that movie. So also, the recommendations are also based on our whole household um, model. When what do I mean by a whole household model is that everyone has to find something to watch. So you'd find that in the listed recommend, recommended movies, you'll find that you still have a PG-13 rating movie, even though probably your whole household is above PG-18. This is also to allow you to find interest and diversity in the content, and also to allow that in case it's a family, they are able to find content for the dad, for the mom, for the young ones also, and also content that everyone can be able to enjoy and watch. Another recommendation category that they have is the top 10 row ranking to find best possible set for ordering items for members. So you find like in Kenya, we have the top 10 shows that are being streamed. And these top 10 shows have still to have different PG ratings. They cannot only give you a PG 18 because everyone is going to look at the Netflix recommendation top 10 movies or um, series or sec um, movies or series and they need to provide content for everyone. Then another one is based on when you, on the genre of movie that you've watched. So if you like watching action movies, you'll still find a recommendation um, list that shows you the different types of gender of action movies that you'd be interested in or themed movies like on romance. Yeah. Then we have a feature called Facebook Connect. This has not been rolled out countrywide due to the data protection issues, um, worldwide, not countrywide, worldwide, but in some sections it is. And this is a feature that allows you to connect your Netflix account with your Facebook account. Once you connect it, it enables you to see what movie that your um, friends have watched and you can be able to try them. So it, it embraces the concept of social support, which uh, takes after, um, the fact that if some if some of your friends like something, most probably you will end up liking it or 
end up trying it also not because you actually like it but because you find social support from your friends for doing the same thing as you yes so netflix business objective you'd say is to maximize member satisfaction and also to increase their month-to-month -month subscription retention which correlates with maximizing video uh, video content consumption so as i said the return of investment for the recommendations can be seen in the annual growth and net worth of netflix currently so they have been able to increase their share price and gains from 11 percent in 2021 to in 2023 to 23 percent yes and um so i'm coming to the end as i said i will only focus on three things which is devops is my culture which we looked at aws uh and what they have been able and the two two pizza team and how it's able to cater on the roles and we can see the takeaway from that is devops is not about the roles but the culture if the culture um if you're not able to coin a culture that is able to um, to integrate and make everyone feel productive and able to satisfy um their urge for working to you for you or for the company then you're going to miss out on the maximum productivity from your employee employee then you have the agility frameworks are not a one size fits all netflix and spotify have a different um different agility uh different agile methods that they are using but at the same time they still make profits and they are still the most of, they are still the growing the best growing industries at the moment and then no business ever existed without offering value so it's not a copy and paste um that would work for any business you have to adapt and cherry pick any good idea and at the same time you still need at the end of the day to be offering value yes and value can be any value can be from increased productivity for employees to increase customer retention yeah so and that traps the end of my talk and i will pause here and ask if there's any questions okay so so far there are no questions on the chat but I'd like to invite uh, guys to post their questions on the chat. So is there anyone with a question? You uh, post it on the chat so that we can be able to respond to it. Uh, meanwhile, we can be getting um, your feedback. Uh, how was the session? So you can tell us if it was good. If you learned anything, you can share there on the chat as well what you learned. So was the session good so you wait for the questions did you guys enjoy the session uh are you guys in the session probably we are we've been thinking people are in the session and they are not there <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, does anyone have a question? Uh, you just type it on the chat. Are you able to access the chat? I hope you should be able to access the chat. Uh, somebody kindly respond so that I can know there is no issue. Okay, so I can see uh, Elizabeth Wairimu saying that was talk, Lynette. Thank you to the Nairobi DevOps team for organizing this. So uh, I'll give maybe 30 seconds. If, if there will be no question, we'll have to end it there. So for today, I can see the numbers so are too low for this session, but the session has been very insightful. Uh, we have sessions every week and um you can be uh, looking out for those sessions so i can see here another one says the session has been informative thanks a lot for the insights so we'll have sessions every week uh, so we have online sessions and you're also planning a physical session that you're going to tell you about so this month you're going to resume our physical sessions 
So we'll have one physical session this month. And we're also going to have campus tours this month. So we look forward to more interaction. And uh, if there are no questions, uh, oh, I can see Paul here says, I've enjoyed the session. It was very informative and let my expectation and met my expectations to the core. Thank you. Uh, it's good to hear that. So if the, there are no questions, maybe you can hear from Lynette the last words, if you have any last words. Um, I mean, for me, thank you for joining in the session. Thank you to the Nairobi DevOps team for organizing this. And see you out there. And if you'd like to connect with me, my LinkedIn is Lynette Kyunga. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank you very much. I wish you guys a good week. See you in the next one. Elisa, you have a question? You can just type on the chat. If you have a question. Uh, but if it was a mistake, that is fine. Bye-bye, guys.